Let's say that I have a bag of marbles. And blue is my favorite color. Let's say that I have 10 blue, 8 purple, and 6 green marbles. So, you know, B, blue. So this bag of marbles has eight, uh, 10 blue, 8 purple, and 6 green marbles. So how many total marbles does it have? We'll add it up. 10 and 8 is 18 plus 6 is uh, 24. So 24 total marbles in the bag, right? I probably should know that. Now let's say that I'm randomly selecting one marble. Now, first of all, I need to say that it's random because if it were not random, that would affect the probability. Um, I need to also say that I'm only selecting one because if I select more than one, that also changes how I calculate my probability. So I'm randomly selecting one marble from this bag. What does this notation mean? Find the probability that that one marble is blue. Remember I told you I'm not gonna, where did I write that? I'm not gonna always write it like this. To find this event, then I'm not always gonna do that. I'm gonna go faster and just say probability of blue. Use the same notation, but not like to find the event first. So if I say P of blue, I said I'm randomly selecting one marble. What's the probability that that one marble is blue? Well, how many blue marbles do I have in my bag? 10. Out of how many total possible marbles? 24. Mm -hmm. Now this is the fraction form. We always want to simplify our fraction, right? So um, 2 goes into 10 5 times and 2 goes into 24 12 times. So this would be my fraction form of this probability. Um, decimal form 5 out of 12 is, okay, so perfect. 0.4166666. What do you do? When you're dealing with probability, I personally like a lot of rounding to the nearest tenth of a percent. So what you're going to do when you have it in decimal form, and just pay attention to how you want to round, how you're asked to round. But I like to the nearest tenth of a percent. So 0.417. Three digits to the right of the decimal place. Three to four digits to the right of the decimal place is typical for probability, which means that it's about 41.7% chance that I have a bag of 24 marbles with 10 blue, 8 purple, and 6 green. I randomly select one without looking. The probability that it's blue is 41.7%. I would say that's pretty high. I would say that that's probably likely to happen. Um, and that makes sense because the majority of the marbles are blue. So the numbers have to make sense with what I would assume to happen, right? Um, now, what does this mean? Not blue. Well, what's not blue in this bag? Well, purple or green, right? So now I'm saying I'm again only selecting one marble, but now I'm asking, you know, for the probability that that one marble is not blue. Would you agree that this is everything but this? Not blue is everything but this. Purple or green? That's basically what's left. How many are left? I use 10 for blue. How many are left? 14. 14 out of 24. Or 2 goes into 14 7 times. 2 goes into 24 12 times. Um, or... 58.4. Thank you. And how do you end it that fast? Did you do it already? 58.3. Approximately 0.583. Or 58.3%. Can you tell me anything interesting about these two events? Anything interesting about, you know, blue... And not blue. What do you notice about 5 twelfths or even 10 twenty fourths and 14 twenty fourths? What do you notice about the two of those? Together they create everything, correct? 10 and 14 is 24. If I have blue and not blue together, it represents the whole thing. Notice that if I take this and I add it to this, I get 1. If I take 0 0.417 and I add 0 0.583, I get 1. If I take 41.7% and I add 58.3%, I get 100%. These two are called complements. Complements. These are complements of each other. This is a very important concept. Um, complements. 
Um, the complement of event A, which is denoted A with a bar over it, okay, and in our book it's A with a bar over it. Sometimes, you know, you might see it like that other places. These are the different notation for complements, um, complementary events. These are the complements of A. Consists of all outcomes from the sample space, uh, I say from the sample space, that are not A. So, um, where A does not occur. Everything but A. And that's what um, I have here, right? That's what I have here. If probability of getting a blue marble were event A, the probability of not a blue would be A complement, represented that way. That's a very important concept for you to understand because you're going to see it used a lot later. Now, why do I need to know, you know, why is this important? Sometimes it makes calculation quicker and easier. Now, why? Um, if I have the probability of A, and I add to it the probability of A complement, we talked about this, then the sum of that should equal the total sample space. So represented in decimal form, the sum of it will be 1 or, oops, or in percentage form, the sum of that will be 100%. Sum of, of, of any event and its complement, their corresponding probabilities should add up to 1 or 100%. Now, what does that do for me? Okay, well, if the sum of these is 1, then I can use some algebra and do some manipulation. Let's say that I have or I want the probability of A and I have the complement. I could subtract it from 1 or over here in percentage form. I could subtract it from 100% and get probability of A, and vice versa. If I want a complement, I can subtract the probability of A and get a complement. Is that true? If I go back here, let me add to that. Let's say I want the probability that um, not blue, right? I'm claiming that if I go 1 minus the probability of blue, let's say you know I use 10 out of 24, that I should get the same thing that I got if I just did what we did before. Subtracting fractions, you need a common denominator. So I need to convert this into a fraction with the denominator of 24, which is 24 over 24, and you'll see 24 minus 10 on top is 14 over 24. That matches what we got here. Same thing. You're doing the same idea, but I'm just not, you know, let's say I'm not going here. Um, most of the time, if I write something like this, the probability that it will rain tomorrow is 30%. And I ask for the probability that it won't rain tomorrow. What is your answer? Anybody? 70. Yeah. Well, how'd you do that? You did that real fast. I think it's a natural thing. You guys, you naturally go 100% minus 30%, I'm in percent form, to get 70%. Why? These are complementary events. If it's, gonna, it's either going to rain or not rain. So this is, let's say, event A. This is its complement. The sum of the two has to add up to the total case because it's either going to rain or not. So what you want to remember with complements is you want to remember not only in notation form, not only if I write P of A and P of A complement, what they mean, but I want you to also remember what they mean in, um, you know, verbal form. If I write, you know, probability of blue, I want you to know the complement of that would be not blue, everything but blue, or purple or green. You have to think about it not only verbally, but also in its proper notation, okay? It can be confusing sometimes, but if you get it now with the simple case, if you get deep into thinking about it, It'll be easier later on because you use it for other stuff to make other type of calculations easier. Complementary events make a lot of other calculations so much easier that we, you know, we're going to use it a lot later. So um, I want you to really think about not only notation-wise what complementary events are, but also um, verbally.